as promised, more logarithms. And today, we learned something I know you've just been itching to learn. Another property of logarithms. I know. Now, have you, have you noticed yet that all the, t all the log problems that we do, everything has the same base? Or can be written as the same base? Have any of you worried, worried, ha, <laughs> Freudian slip, have any of you wondered what happens if the bases don't match yet? Because I've been get, kind of cherry picking questions so far, right? Making sure that the bases were always the same so that we could always cancel our logarithms rather easily. Well, in reality, that's like saying the answer to a question should always be a whole number. No, I mean, there's a lot more times when decimals are the right answer. And well, logarithms are no different. There's a lot of times where not the same base is going to be probably the issue. Now, there are times when we can deal with that algebraically and get pretty answers. Um, subjectively pretty answers. Comparatively pretty, right? I mean, logarithms are rarely pretty. So today we're going to talk about the change of base formula. And the change of base formula is, is called that because it is literally how you would change the base of your logarithm to a different base. I showed you something a couple days ago with the laws of logarithms that I said was not a rule. Let me rewrite what I wrote that day. I wrote that log of A divided by log of B does not equal log base or log base B, wait, what's wrong with me? Does not equal log of A divided by B. This was the thing I said, right? You guys remember that? Great, the students want it to be. But does that mean that log of A divided by log of B isn't something special? No, it doesn't mean that at all. You see, log of A divided by log of B is actually log base B of A. They're equal to each other. And that's what you're seeing right here. But the one that IB has showed you is even more generic they changed it to log base C of A over log base C of B, where C is any base you want, as long as it doesn't break the rules of the base. Remember, the rules of the base are that it must be a positive number, but it can't be equal to 1. You can literally change the base to anything you want, including E, if for some reason you wanted to. And that's why the ln of A over the ln of B is there as well. They're saying, you want to... You want to write log base 2 of 5 in, in base 7? Go for it. It's log base 7 of 5 divided by log base 7 of 2. So you can change the base to anything you want. And sometimes it is useful to do that. In fact, it's useful a lot, to be honest with you. Most commonly, what you see is log base b of a equals log a divided by log b. Because usually the common log is your friend. See, those are both base 10. What it says is as long as you use the same base on the top and the bottom, you can do this. And again, one of the nice things is that base is always on bottom. Lots of Bs. So part A says find log base 2 of 9 by changing it to base 10. Oh, okay, well, A. Hey, log base. 2 of 9 is log 9 divided by log 2. You now have the ability to type this on a calculator, on any scientific calculator. That is how you evaluate logarithms on a scientific calculator. You use the change of base formula. So you would grab any scientific you wanted, or even your graphing calculator. I should have had the graphing calculator program open. However, we know what that does when I'm trying to record the notes. It makes everything lag. And you have a log button, and you would do log 9. Actually, why am I telling you? I'm just going to do it. Log 9, close your parentheses, divide by log 2, close your parentheses, and hit enter. You get about, to three sig figs, 3.17. That's how you would do it on any scientific, and our graphing calculator is no different. By the way, if you wanted to, Instead of using base 10, you could have used base E. But log base E is ln. ln is just the symbol we use for log base E. So I could say log base 2 of 9 is equal to the ln of 9 divided by the ln of 2. 
and I promise you, you will get the exact same answer. Guaranteed 100% exactly the same. Is there a reason why that works? Yes, there is a reason why that works. I'm trying to figure out, tell you what, let me finish the notes, and then I will show you why change of base works. It's a good question. I do want to make something really clear here, though. You know, normally when you set up, normally when you set up fractions equal fractions, you can get away with the tops being equal and the bottoms being equal, kind of. But I mean, that's not always true, right? If I said this, 1 divided by 2 equals 2 fourths, this is 100% true statement. But you notice across the top, 1 does not equal 2, and across the bottoms, 2 does not equal 4, right? Think of these things as saying something like that, where I could say log of 9 divided by log of 2 does equal the ln of 9 divided by the ln of 2. But that does not imply that log of 9 equals ln of 9. They are not equal. And that does not imply that log of 2 equals ln of 2. They are not equal. What this is telling you is that their ratios are the same. It's like, it's like how trig works, where it doesn't matter the size of the triangle. Sine of 40 degrees is always the same answer. doesn't matter how big the triangle is. It's like that. The ratios are equal to each other, like one half is equal to two fourths. Cool? Okay. That's how you use change of base to evaluate things on a calculator. Oh, by the way, your graphing calculator actually can do log base 2 of 9. It has the ability to, to do that. And I will show you how to do that at the end of the notes when I'm finished writing because I don't want to fire up another program and make my computer lag. Cool? But I will do it on the notes after I'm finished writing things. Is this the last example for today? Yay! This is a logarithmic equation, and we we kind of dove into logarithmic equations the other day. Remember when I had that boo-boo where it actually didn't work out once it was a quadratic? Because somehow or another I switched a sign or a number or something, and I don't freaking know where it went wrong. But it did go catastrophically wrong. The process was perfect. The numbers, they were fallible. And so was the person who wrote them. But, you know, I did my best. So anyway, we, we kind of we saw that stuff. And what we talked about was you cannot cancel logarithms until it's the only thing on that side of the equal sign. And, and, you can't cancel logarithms unless the bases match. So, as long as the bases match on both sides, you can cancel those logarithms with the appropriate exponential base. So that brings me to the, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, those don't have the same base. One's base 27 and one is base 3. But how do I instantly recognize that this is a question that I can solve by hand? I instantly recognize it as a question I can solve by hand because 27 is base 3. So luckily, log base 27 can be written in terms of log base 3. But we're going to get there using change of base. So because we see our, our bases don't match, the very first thing I would do is go straight to change of base, and I'm going to use log and, and log common log. Cool. I could do this in log base 2 if I was sadistic. And you would have to write a bunch, but it still wouldn't change the answers. But I'm going to go ahead and stick to common log. So the first one can be written as log of x minus 8 divided by log of 27. And then plus log of the cube root of x divided by log of 3. And this equals 2 thirds. So I haven't changed anything yet, I just used change of base. Wouldn't it be great if the denominators of those fractions matched? Because if they matched, I could combine these two fractions, right? Oh, wait a minute. That's right. 27 is 3 to the third. And while I'm at it, instead of saying cube root of x, I'm going to say x to the one-third power. Like so. Now we get to use some of our log properties. 
And the one that we're going to be using right here is the fact that you can take an exponent out of an argument and move it to the front. So I could take this power of three, drop it right here, and I could take this power of one third and drop it right here. But, huh, huh, you know what? Watch this. Let me scroll down a little bit. Something really interesting. Actually, it's sidebar, sidebar. You ready for this? One third divided by x. You guys know that this means one third times one over x, right? Which has the net result of taking this denominator and putting it here. You see that? Okay, just make sure. So sidebar handled. Wow, that actually connected almost seamlessly. God, I'm good. When you're good, you're good, you know. Okay, so um, we got log of x minus 8 over here. The exponent of 3 comes to the front. And this 1 third will move to the front of this logarithm. But because of the sidebar we just saw, I can actually bring this 3 to right here. Guess what? These fractions have the same denominator. That means these logarithms have the same base. Or can be written in the same base, I should say. Michael from who? V sauce? Never heard of that. What is it? <laughs> it was like one of the first like YouTube science channels around. Yeah. No, never heard of it. Huh? Is it S A U C E like actual sauce like tomato sauce? Huh. Okay, hey, I'll look. I'll look. No, no, I'll look. Anyway. So what I'm hearing is this guy has an amazing voice and is highly intelligent. Oh, come on, active panel. I mean, pretty much. You're not far off. Come on. What is happening right now? Technology hates me. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have just just devolved into total chaos. Shh. Um, we're not finished yet. Okay, I see the same denominator. That means I can combine this to a single fraction. And hopefully this question works out because last time we did something like this, it didn't work out because I wrote it myself and made a boo-boo. You guys like fractions? No. Yeah, I me either. But but I can't just I can't just undo the change of base thing right here. That doesn't really work. But something I've noticed is that both sides of my equal sign have a divide by three on them. You see that? So I'm gonna make my life simple real quick just by multiplying both sides by three because now I don't have that going on. So that'll clean it up a little bit. Oh, oh, and you know what? You remember that rule we learned the other day that says when you add two logarithms that have the same base, you actually just multiply their arguments? Those are both log base 10. They have the same base. That means I can write that numerator as a single logarithm in base 10. Log of, and I'm not going to do parentheses around parentheses, so log of x times x minus 8 over log of 3 equals 2. All right, we're getting somewhere. That, whoops. There you go. So we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Now that I have a single log divided by a single log, I'm going to undo change of base here. This is where I'm going to undo it. 
I'm going to write this back as log base 3 of, and then that argument. Do I have to do it this way? No. There's other ways I could be doing it, but this is just the way I like. Question? Yeah. What's up? I think I, I think I, I like, Mm -hmm. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of look. Look, this is what I like to tell people: is like when I teach them mathematics and they get lost. I go, look, here's the problem. Here's why you're lost. You're lost because you walked around in this forest and you got confused because there was trees everywhere and and all the trees look the same, right? And I say, well, I I just went above the forest and said, what's the big deal? They're all just trees. It's all the same to me. You see, when you can see through the math and see the, the higher patterns that are going on, it's just, it's not that it's forbidden. It's just that it's like, there it is. It's the kind of thing that if you try to explain it to students, they're probably never going to get it. But when they see it, aha, you know, it's just cool. Makes me, makes me want to nod. Anyway, I'm going to undo change of base here. We're going to scroll all the way back up because... Necesito más espacio, and we say log, be, log base 3 of x times x minus 8 equals 2. I can now cancel the logarithm. Because it's the only logarithm on the left side, and there's no other logarithms anywhere with a different base, I can cancel log base 3 with... Exponential base 3. So we will exponential base 3 both sides right there. Let me tell you something that students often do wrong. They forget to change this to a 9. They'll just leave it a 2. Believe it or not, it happens. It really does happen. What we're left with now is x times x minus 8 equals 9. What a fun problem. And by fun, I mean, wow, there's a lot going on. Distribute your x, x squared minus 8x equals 9. And look, it's just a quadratic. It's all it is. Bring the 9 over, subtract it to the, to the left side. x squared minus 8x minus 9 equals 0. And you're just looking for the two numbers that multiply to negative 9 and add to negative 8. Those numbers are negative 9, positive 1 x minus 9 times x plus 1 equals 0, which solves extremely easily. x equals 9, x equals negative 1. But wait, there's more. Remember, logarithms have domain restrictions. There's restrictions on their base and the argument. The base and the argument must be positive numbers, and they must not equal 1. Does that mean I can't have a negative solution? No, that's not what that means. What it means is the solutions can't make the argument or the base a negative number or 1 or 0. So let's go up and make sure that 9 and or negative 1 do not break the rules way back to the very, very beginning. And right here, or right here, it actually doesn't matter. If you plug in a negative 1 to either one of those things, you have a negative argument. So x cannot equal negative 1. It's simply a coincidence that the negative solution was extraneous. You must always check. I could just see the mad scientists that write the IB questions making, forcing the answers to be negative, and they work. So just always check. Yes, sir? You can't have negative argument or negative base, correct? No base, and it can't be zero or one. But like, why having like a negative like thing to stop imaginary numbers? And that's what happens if you have negative bases or negative arguments. You're actually talking about logarithms in the complex plane. So it's possible in in complex plane. It's not possible in Cartesian. What's the complex plane? At the, at complex numbers, imaginary numbers. So there is so there if you're interested in finding out about that again I, I can't remember if the guy's channel is called red pin black pin 
or black pen, red pen? It's one of those two. Is a uh, dude he holds two dry erase markers at the same time, and they're just different colors, and he does math with them. And he does a lot of neat stuff. He does like negative factorials, logarithms of negative arguments, all kinds of neat stuff like that. Yes? They could give you two negative solutions that both fail, yes. You would write no solutions. So is it possible to have two solutions? Yeah. Is it possible to have one? Yeah. Is it possible to have none? Yeah. You just have to check them. Can the solutions be positive? Sure. Could they be negative? Yeah. Could they be zero? Sure. What matters is that the argument and or base remains positive and does not equal one. That's all that matters. Black pin, red pin. I'll remember forever because B comes before R in the alphabet. Black pin, red pin. All right. So that is that fun question. Now let's talk about change of base. The, the question was, why does change of base work, right? That was the question. Why does change of base work? OK, let's see. Let's, let's talk about log base B of A. If B and A were numbers, then we all know that log base B of A would have a value, correct? Let's call that value x. It actually doesn't matter what I'm calling it, so I'm just going to call it x. Now, since log base b is an operation, this operation can be canceled with its inverse operation. That inverse operation would be exponential base b. Sorry, just itching myself. We good here? Okay. You see, logarithm, logarithm is a, an, an operation, right? Now, a log's job is to cancel an exponential base, but it only works if the base matches the argument, correct? So what happens if you use a logarithm that doesn't have a matching base? For example, log base C. Since it's an operation, I could take the log base C of both sides. And oh, oh, that's right. When there's an exponent in the argument, it can move to the front. So if you wanted to know what the value of x was, you would just divide both sides by log base c of b. So you see they're equal to each other. And C could be any base you want, including E, which would have been LN. Neat, huh? Now, here's the real question that nobody asked. I just used a rule without proving to you that it was true. Which one? The exponent rule. You see, you have to know why these things are true. Now, I could easily show you why the exponent rule works using the same kind of logic. Yes, sir? Oh, no, because log base C is not a number. It can't cancel log base C of something over log base C of something. The log base C's don't cancel because it's an operation. It's like um, square root bar or something like that. Now, it doesn't have the same properties of a square root, but it's an operation, not a value. So since it doesn't have a value, it doesn't cancel off the top and bottom. Okay. I'm trying to remember... If I can easily show you the exponent rule working without using change of base. Because if I use change of base, I'd kind of be using circular logic, wouldn't I? So I'm trying to remember how to do it without using change of base. Let's see. Let's see if I can work my way through it for a quick minute before I show you how to use log base B on your calculator. So if I have log, log of, I'll just pick a random A to the M. I'm just trying, I'm trying to logic my way through this for a quick second without using change of base. Can I do it without using change of base? Okay. 
I got it. A to the M means A times itself. M times, correct? And this would have happened M times. Right? So using the addition law of logarithms, it says when you have a product inside the argument, you could separate that into the addition of several logarithms. And this happens m times. And since this happens m times, You can literally say m times log base or log of a. Again, though, I had to use a property. I used the addition law. And by the way, the subtraction, the quotient thing, it uses the exact same proof, basically, as addition. So now the question is, can I prove the addition one without using change of base or without using exponent rule? And there is a way. It's just been a long time since I've had to do it. Whoa, goodness. That was crazy. Let's try again. Log of AB. I'm trying to show that this is log of A plus log of B. Got it. I got it. This is actually really easy to do. Log of quantity AB. It has some value, correct? Okay, let's just say that value is x. We can cancel common log with exponential base 10. So base 10 both sides. And what you get is a times b equals 10 to the x. And... I'm trying to. I can smell the fact that you're doing this. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get there. I swear I'm trying to get there. It's it's an exponent trick. Mm -hmm. Oh oh come on come on come on. Come on. Oh, it's killing me. It, it happens right here, and I can't remember exactly what to do. I'm trying to show, I'm trying to use that when you multiply two numbers at the same base, you add their exponents. That's what I'm trying to do right now. When you multiply two numbers at the same base, you add their exponents. So I am trying to, this is horrible YouTube video, by the way. Because here I am struggling with this thing. It's been a long, this is always the hard one. Only because I forget the trick, and it is a trick. Uh, let me think on it for a second. Hold on, let me think on it for a second. But while I think on it, we're going to let my subconscious work because it won't quit working. I want to show you the graphing calculator. So let me fire up the graphing calculator program, and I want to show you where the command for log base B is on your calculator. Your calculator actually calls it log base. Mm -hmm. Your calculator actually calls it log base. I'm just waiting for it to start. It's not the fastest thing in the world. I'll check. We're almost there, people. I promise. Okay, here we go. Let me clear this. This is next year's math. Here you go. You guys want to use your graphing calculator to do log base instead of doing change of base? Shh. Hey, hey. Right here in this math key. Look, this is one of the reasons why last chapter didn't go so well. We got to learn how to rely on our technology. Right here in this math key. Math is where most of your structures are going to be. So I encourage you to look through 
here. Um, but I believe log base is under number. Could be wrong. It's been a while. It's under math? Okay. Oh, it's at the bottom. I was going to say, it's at the bottom of one of them. There it is. Log base. What? What's rough? It doesn't say log base somewhere? Mm, it should be able to do it. It's probably just hiding somewhere else. Anyway, you just hit log base, and it gets you two boxes, so you can fill in those boxes. That's how you do it, though. Okay, so we're going to hit record again and in the hopes that this actually takes it somewhere. We're just going to hope. Otherwise, the whole end of this video looks bad. By the way, if you're watching this video online and you don't want to see me possibly embarrass myself, just hit stop now. Okay, anyway, here's, here's what we're going to do. Remember that you can write any number as any base you want. So let's call this number A. Let's call it a base 10. Shh, guys, guys. Let's call it a base 10 number. Let's call it 10 raised to the log of A. Wow, because I have an extra program running, which would be the graphing calculator program, it is really bogging down my computer. Let me close the graphing calculator program, try to save some memory space, because this computer is not the most powerful. Times, yeah, I got it. And B, you could say, is 10 raised to the log of B. And when you multiply two numbers with the same base, what? What is happening right now? Did I miss the bar? When you multiply two numbers with the same base, you add their exponents. So this thing on the left is 10 raised to the log of A plus log of B equals 10 raised to X. And, oh, that's right, you can take the log of both sides to cancel the base tens. So if you do common log of both sides, the base tens cancel and you get that x equals, which by the way was what our original thing was, log of a times b equals log of a plus log of b. Mic drop. I figured it out. Woot.